Hello and uh, welcome back. Uh, we have been talking about the cluster expansion, so we'll continue that discussion uh, till we uh, derive the equation of state. So we'll uh, talk about the cluster integrals and the virial coefficients, and finally the equation of state at a given uh, level or at a given order. And uh, it's important to understand that uh, we are calculating the partition function for an interacting gas, uh, which uh, uh, is the molecules of the gas are interacting pairwise. Okay? So, uh, the interacting partition function is uh, I mean I write interacting partition function, but it means that the partition function of the interacting gas. Okay? So, uh, this word is to be uh, seen carefully. So, we write it as Z n uh, V t uh, or you can write n v t uh, with the n inside. Uh, this is equal to sum of uh, all the distinct graphs. Okay. So, this is important and uh, we are talking about a L cluster graph. Okay. So, uh, L is the number of uh, participating uh, clusters there. So, um, say uh, we have given this example, say a 5 cluster uh, graph looks like you have a 1, uh, 2, uh, 3, 4 and 5 uh, and let me show this. So, this 1 and then there is 1, 4 and 3, 4 and 1, 2 and 1, 5 and 2, 5. Okay. So, this is uh, a 5 cluster graph which can be written in terms of um, in terms of the expressions or the expansion in terms of these f functions. So, this is d cube r 1, d cube r 2, uh, d cube r 3, uh, d cube r 4, and d cube r 5 and uh, then we have f 1 2, f 1 3, f 1 4 um, and f uh, 1 5, um, f uh, 3 4, uh, f 2 5 and so on. Okay? So, that is a 5 cluster graph and we have to sum over all these distinct graphs. And uh, in order to show what is distinct, we have shown this as an example, uh, which are identical and uh, non-identical clusters. So, in doing so, we can uh, show that there is, uh, for example, uh, 1, 2 and 3. Um, and uh, we'll write these things and then put the connections. Um, and wait till I put the connections. So uh, this, this, uh, this, and this. Um, this and this, but this is not the same as this, this and this. Okay? So, the first three are identical uh, whereas, the last one is uh, has to be counted separately. So, uh, how do we write the cluster integrals? So, we can write the cluster integrals including all these clusters as um, uh, Let us write them as B L V T it is equal to 1 by L factorial lambda uh, 3 L minus 3 uh, into V uh, into sum of all these all possible L clusters. So, once we find this we should be able to find the uh, partition function. Okay? 
So uh, this prefactor is important and it is chosen such that uh, your BL uh, VT is dimensionless. And uh, you will see that uh, this lambda uh, uh, to the power 3L minus 3, where lambda is of course the uh, thermal de Broglie wavelength and this for L equal to uh, 1, uh, this there is no term of uh, lambda. Um, from the second term onwards, there is a lambda cube and then there is a lambda 6 and so on and so forth. We will see that um, soon. Okay. And um, so, now how uh, do we actually uh, calculate these integrals? You see that um, if you keep one particle fixed okay, uh, then and carry out the integral over all the other particles okay. and uh, uh, so your f i j um, which was considered earlier uh, and this f i j has a finite range. And why does it have a finite range? Because the interaction is uh, a neighboring or it involves neighboring molecules. So, this has a finite range. So, this integral only extends over a few sites. Uh, few uh, sites or uh, if you do not say sites over a few molecules and uh, basically over a few uh, sort of small range. So, this means that over a small range and this is uh, for if we keep the position of a particle to be fixed say at R 1. So, position of one particle is fixed at R 1. And now, uh, what we do is that or you can call it as R i, um, R i to be any particle. Now, when you uh, integrate over or sum over all R i that brings in a factor of uh, V volume and uh, that volume would cancel with this volume that you see in the denominator uh, on in this expression for B L. Okay. So, uh, for example, let us see uh, some of the B's. So, for example, a B 1 the first term is equal to 1 by V and this does not involve any link. So, this is equal to 1 by V uh, d cube R 1 which is equal to 1. So, B 1 equal to 1 and we can calculate B 2, B 2 is equal to, um, so you have uh, uh, L factorial. So, B 2 is 1 by 2 factorial and uh, we have a lambda cube uh, V and then we have connection of this kind uh, which is 1 and 2 connection which is equal to 1 by uh, 2 lambda cube V uh, and then we have this integral which is d cube R 1, uh, d cube R 2 uh, and F 1 2. Uh, and this is equal to 1 by 2 lambda cube V um, and uh, d cube R 1 2 and F 1 2. Uh, this is written as, so now I have a d cube, uh, uh, so 2 uh, lambda cube V uh, and we have this d cube R F of R uh, and uh, this of course, uh, can be written as uh, you know. Uh, so, in the limit v going to infinity this is 1 by uh, or rather this uh, if we uh, change this d cube r to uh, 4 pi r square dr, uh, then we have this as 2 pi over lambda cube and we have 0 to infinity uh, and we have r square dr f of r. Okay. So, we will show these calculations uh, explicitly when we uh, go and finally, calculate the partition function. So, this is that and then uh, you can uh, sort of put a form, put a preferred form for f of r.
All right. So, uh, let me uh, see the next one uh, and this is B 3 which is 3 factorial is nothing but 6 and it is lambda 6 into V and then you have all those terms. Uh, let me show them by these graphs. The B 2 I have shown it by expressions. So, let me show these by graphs and uh, plus uh, 1, 2, 3 plus uh, 1, 2, 3 uh, plus 1, 2, 3 and so on. So, all these distinct graphs have to be taken into account. So, we have this, uh, then we have this, then we have this and then the other uh, non-identical. So, these three are of course, identical uh, which is what we have said and uh, this is of course, the non-identical, but they have to be counted separately. So, this is like um, F 1 2, uh, F 1 3, this is F 1 2, F 2 3, this is F 1 3, F 2 3, and this is F 1, 2, uh, 2, 3 and 3, 1. Okay. So, these are uh, the B 3 terms um, and uh, they can be calculated. Let me uh, show the calculation of B 3 uh, explicitly. So, 3 factorial is 6 and then lambda to the power 6 V and uh, then we have uh, D cube R 1, uh, D cube R 2 all these um, coordinate integrals have to be written D cube R 3 and we have uh, these F 1 2 F 1 3 plus F 1 2 F 2 3 plus F 1 3 F 2 3 plus F 1 2 F 1 3 F 2 3. This is uh, the form that we have uh, written down earlier in terms of these uh, things, uh, these diagrams and now uh, explicitly calculating them uh, means that we have uh, these d cube uh, r and d cube r prime and we have uh, these three as identical. So, they can be written as f of r and f of r prime and plus um, uh, f of r, uh, f of r prime and f of uh, r minus r prime. Okay, so, that is the last term. Okay. So, uh, these are uh, these things, this uh, expression for B 3 and this is nothing but equal to 6 uh, lambda to the power 6 V and uh, then uh, we can write this as 3. Uh, twice of lambda cube B 2 because you see this expression appears in uh, B 2. Okay. So, this is 3 into uh, 2 uh, lambda cube B 2 square and now we have a D cube R, D cube R prime. This we cannot do anything. We have to just leave the last term. We have to leave it as it is and f of r minus r prime. So, this simplifies to a 2 b 2 square uh, plus 1 by uh, 6 lambda to the power uh, 6 and then there is a d cube r 1 2 d cube r 1 3 and we have integrated over one of the volumes that is d cube r 2 3. And, um, that leaves us with uh, f 1 2 uh, f 1 3 f 2 3. So, uh, where your b 2 is given by uh, 1 by 2 lambda cube uh, d cube r f of r which is what we have seen earlier. Okay. So, there is a int uh, integration over the volume. Okay. So, um, the uh, partition function the canonical partition function then can be written as uh, z n. Uh, this is for the sake of you know repetition. Uh, so, this is sum of 
all distinct n particle graphs okay so that's the definition of the partition function in this case so we have to uh, calculate all these distinct n particle graphs so what's an n particle graph so an n particle graph is is a product of of the number of clusters so uh, of which there are ml um, are l clusters so what it means is that we have m1 one particle cluster that is there is no link m2 two particle clusters m3 three particle clusters and so on okay so but there is a condition that you have to satisfy is that your uh, l that is the number of clusters uh, multiplied by these ml uh, has to be equal to from 1 to n has to satisfy the total n particles that are present in the system okay so uh, once again these zn uh, the partition function is sum of all distinct n particle graphs and what is the definition of n particle graphs. So, an n particle graph is defined as a product of number of clusters um, and there are ml of l clusters which means there are uh, m1 1 particle clusters, m2 2 particle clusters and so on subject to the condition this. Okay. So, uh, let us call this as equation 1 where ml is equal to 0, 1, 2 and so on up till n. Okay. So, this condition has to be satisfied. In fact, it turns out that this condition is uh, important and uh, it makes matter more complicated in the calculation of the partition function. So, just to uh, you know remind you that uh, this have to be um, counted separately. So, we have these uh, this and this have to be counted separately. Okay. So, uh, now uh, notice this carefully a given set of of ml clusters satisfying uh, equation 1 that is this equation. Okay. Um, so, for a given set ml uh, you know with m 1 1 particle clusters m 2 2 particle clusters and so on. So, uh, does not uh, uniquely specify a graph. What it means is that this set actually uh, denotes a bunch of graphs. Okay. So, uh, let me give you an example. So, uh, say 1 uh, you have this what I just said. Uh, so, this let me draw it once more. So, it is a 1, uh, uh, 2 and 3 and 1, 2 and 3 like these are different clusters which is what you have learnt. These are non-identical and different clusters um, and 2 would be um, 1, 2, 3 and 1, 
two, three, um, and the connections are now given by this and uh, so uh, maybe uh, this is one. Uh, so this is actually four, and this is. So by these examples, what we want to say is the following: that uh, there are, are in general, uh, many ways. of forming um, an L cluster. Okay. So, uh, so this set of integers M L set of uh, integers which are given by this M L, uh, they uh, specify a collection of graphs, not a single graph. This is what I want to say. So, let the sum of all the graphs corresponding to this set is denoted by by this sum okay um, so then the partition function is written as with of course vt is written as sum over ml and s of ml So, eventually it boils down to this uh, sum of all the graphs corresponding to this set. Now, this uh, of course, let us call it as equation 2, uh, but uh, this is not an independent equation. It has to be satisfied in conjunction with 1. Okay, so, that is what we have and let us uh, see how one can calculate uh, these uh, S of M L, so that we can um, deduce the partition function for the interacting case. All right, so, um, so the family of graphs that we need to consider uh, emerge from uh, one is that uh, there are different ways of uh, assigning n particles particles to the um, this uh, ML cluster basically. Okay. And uh, for any assignment, uh, there are many different ways of forming the cluster. I mean, so basically, uh, see that for uh, L greater than 2, there are 4 graphs and so on. I mean, L equal to 3 rather, or rather, L greater than 2, there are 4 graphs. So, uh, this tells you the number of distinct ways, this is what we want to find to assign n particles 
into these m l uh, is given by uh, n factorial divided by the so this one factorial divided into to the power m 1 2 factorial to the power m 2 and so on. So, this is n factorial to the power uh, the product of uh, l equal to 1 to n and uh, l factorial whole to the power m l and uh, so m l is like m sub l and this is equation number 3. So, this is one of the key steps here it tells you that number of distinct ways to assign n particles and uh, we will also find out that uh, what are the values of each one of them. Okay. So, uh, they are uh, 1 factorial to the power m 1 where there are m 1 clusters of 1 particle each 2 factorial uh, to the power m 2 where m 2 uh, is a number of uh, 2 particle clusters and so on. So, this entire uh, this uh, uh, different ways that to uh, assign this n particles into this uh, m l uh, uh, set of integers m l clusters. Uh, where m l satisfies this uh, equation which is l m l summed over all l is equal to n. So, uh, the number of uh, distinct ways is equal to this and the value of each term. So, the value of of each term there in this different ways that we just said this is equal to 1 um, b 1 v. Uh, 1 factorial and it is a 2 factorial lambda cube um, b 2 uh, v whole to the power. So, this to the power m 1 to the power m 2 and 3 factorial uh, lambda to the power 6 b 3 v uh, to the power m 3 and so on. So, value of each of those terms is equal to that. So, s uh, that sum over this set of integers m l is equal to n factorial and then there is a product of l equal to 1 to n and uh, this can be written as v uh, lambda to the power 3 l minus 3 uh, into b l whole to the power um, m l and this takes care of the counting process. So, that is your s of m l and hence this is just the nothing but the partition function uh, summed over m l, but of course, uh, with the condition that we have discussed in 1. So, uh, so this is uh, equal to that if you um, so s m l uh, is equal to that and uh, we can simplify it further. We have a, a lambda to the power uh, 3 n and uh, this is l equal to 1 to n and there is a 1 by m l factorial and we have this v over lambda cube b l whole to the power m l ok it is the same expression uh, you can check that uh, we have simply taken out this lambda to the power 3 n uh, giving you a lambda cube in the denominator here and then all these b l terms are there and there is counting uh, of this m l factorial is also taken into account. So, uh, that allows us to write down this z n uh, v t um, which is equal to this m l and uh, product of uh, l equal to 1 to uh, n 1 by m l factorial and we have these uh, v by um, lambda cube uh, b l and to the power m l. So, we write this as uh, equation 4, uh, this as equation 5 and this as equation 6. So, we have been able to calculate um, as a sum uh, over these uh, set of integers m l and this can be actually expanded to get term by term uh, correction to the partition function uh, or, or the non-interacting partition function that we have seen earlier. So, all these uh, as I told that is uh, subject to uh, this condition L m l um, l equal to 1 to n is equal to n ok that is uh, condition number 3 or equation number 3 
Okay, so um, it is probably easier to write uh, the grand partition function because that factorizes uh, in a more uh, sort of easy manner. So, that is a z g. Uh, now, we no longer write it as n v t. So, we write it as this fugacity which is exponential beta mu and uh, t or you can just simply write it as mu. Uh, this becomes equal to uh, n equal to 0 to infinity uh, this makes it easier z f divided by lambda cube whole to the power n and now we have z n v t uh, divided by this n factorial. Okay. So, that is the expression for the grand partition function and uh, this can be uh, actually written as. So, let me see this uh, z f to the power n uh, this is equal to z f to the power sum over l l m l uh, because that is equal to n and then this is equal to the product of l and uh, z f to the power l to the power m l. Okay. So, that uh, gives us uh, z g this is equal to uh, m 1 equal to 0 to infinity, uh, m 2 equal to 0 to infinity and so on and uh, all these uh, you know L clusters I mean uh, will be some M L going from 0 to infinity and this is equal to uh, 1 by M 1 factorial and uh, V over lambda cube uh, Z F uh, uh, B 1 whole to the power uh, M 1 uh, and uh, so, this is one term and the second term is 1 by m 2 factorial and we have a v over lambda cube uh, z f square uh, b 2 whole to the power m 2 and so on all these uh, different terms. So, uh, one can uh, do uh, more simplification. So, what one can do is that it is a 1 over v uh, log of uh, z g uh, z f uh, v t that can be written as 1 over lambda cube and we have a l equal to 1 to infinity and a b l z f whole to the power l uh, just remind you that z f is equal to exponential beta mu. Okay. So, this is uh, this expression for the log of z g which is of course, uh, uh, related to the grand potential. So, let us call this as 9 and uh, so the equation of state is now easy to calculate. So, the equations of state uh, it is nothing but uh, because uh, p over k t is related to log of z g uh, this is what we have extensively used when we did the uh, quantum gases or uh, ideal gases. Uh, now, we are doing the same thing excepting that they are non ideal gases and we have uh, L equal to 1 to uh, infinity and you have a B L um, Z F whole to the power L. So, that is uh, P over K T uh, and um, uh, N over V which is equal to uh, 1 over lambda cube uh, sum over L equal to 1 to infinity and you have a L B L and Z F to the power L. Okay. Uh, and this can be written as uh, 1 by uh, V by N uh, is equal to this 1 over lambda cube L equal to 1 to infinity. So, uh, let us say this is uh, 10 a and we modify 10 b a little bit by dividing uh, on in the left dividing by n and l uh, b l z f uh, l this is nothing but equal to 1 over v. 
uh, where uh, small v is equal to v by n called as a specific volume and let us call this as equation 10 b. So, equation 10 a and 10 b which denotes the um, equation of state. Uh, so, these uh, equations are called as the cluster expansion. So, 10 a and 10 b are called as a cluster expansion for the equation of state. Okay. So, that is the cluster expansion and uh, so basically uh, uh, this uh, above discussion actually denotes uh, the graphical representation of the perturbation series which are uh, uh, basically denoted by the graphs okay. and uh, the formalism is known as the link cluster expansion. Alright, so uh, if we summarize then uh, what we have done is that we have uh, uh, found the sum of all these graphs um, and uh, this sum of all these graphs is basically nothing but the exponential of the sum of all these graphs. And uh, now what we can do is that we can uh, do a, a for a dilute gas. Uh, which means v going to infinity, we can actually write down this b l of v t uh, as in the limit v going to infinity to be b l some tilde and is a function of t. And uh, so, using b l tilde, one can write down the equation of state as p over k t. Uh, equal to 1 by lambda cube and sum over L equal to 1 to infinity and a B L um, a Z F whole to the power L and this is let us call it as 11 A and uh, 1 over the specific volume is equal to 1 over lambda cube um, L equal to 1 to infinity uh, L b l tilde z f to the power l this is 11 b. Okay. So, these are the equations of state in, uh, in the case of a dilute gas where we take this thermodynamic limit that is v going to infinity. Uh, in fact, uh, you can combine uh, these two terms 11 a and 11 b and can write it as p v over k t which is a more familiar form for writing the equation of state and that is nothing but uh, L equal to 1 to infinity uh, A L of T um, and uh, lambda cube by uh, V um, whole to the power L minus 1 and let us call it as 12 and A L uh, of T is uh, called as the uh, lth virial coefficient. All right, so this is the equation of state that we have gotten, but we still haven't uh, calculated all these integrals, and at least we should uh, calculate one or two integrals in order to uh, show that how the uh, real equation of state or the Van der Waals equation of state gets corrected due to this inclusion of the interparticle interaction which is what we have calculated or rather which we have committed ourselves earlier. So, um, what are the uh, results of this uh, virial uh, coefficient and the cluster integrals? So, we need a relationship between uh, virial coefficients uh, which are uh, a l uh, t um, and the cluster integrals uh, which are B L and we can just simply write them as B L tilde uh, because now we have uh, taken this dilute limit 
B L tilde. So, this uh, relationship is important and the relationship can be obtained by uh, just comparing the equation of motion which is uh, L equal to 1 to infinity and A L and uh, so there is this n equal to 1 to infinity uh, n b n we are using this uh, dummy indices n here uh, because uh, we cannot have both l's uh, you know uh, using them that would create uh, that would mean that we are using same indices for uh, both the cluster integrals and the virial coefficient. So, hold to the power n and this hold to the power l minus 1 this is equal to uh, L equal to 1 to infinity. In this side, we do not mind writing it uh, as uh, L because this is just, just a sum over L, there is a single sum and this is uh, Zf to the power L and uh, divided by L equal to again 1 to infinity and we have L B L and Zf whole to the power L. So, this can be called as equation 13. And uh, now, uh, if we expand 13, uh, we can write this as B1 tilde Zf plus 2B2 tilde Zf square plus 3B3 tilde Zf cube plus all these other terms and then uh, so that is the denominator going into the uh, denominator of the right hand side of uh, equation 13 going to the left hand side and then we have a a 1 plus a, a 2 uh, then there is a sum n equal to 1 to infinity uh, n b n uh, tilde z f to the power n um, and uh, plus uh, a 3 uh, sum over n equal to 1 to infinity uh, n b n tilde z f to the power n whole square and all these terms that is equal to uh, the numerator of the right hand side of equation 13 which is b 1 uh, z f um, b 1 tilde z f plus b 2 tilde z f square uh, plus B3 uh, tilde Zf cube and so on. Um, in doing so, there is just one subtle remark that uh, we have lost this information about the volume. So, uh, it is very difficult to uh, predict a phase transition based on this analysis. So, uh, we want to stay away from the critical point because the critical points would uh, require you to uh, you know have two volumes in the PV diagram uh, for two different isotherms, it needs you to demarcate the relationship between the two volumes. But since there is no volume, uh, this uh, will not be uh, relevant or rather it cannot be, uh, it cannot uh, predict a phase transition and in fact, it is more correct to say that we are away from the phase transition point and this perturbation expansion or this graphical expansion that we have said is truly in the gaseous phase of matter uh, and not uh, close to the critical point. So, let us call this as equation 14 and um, so if you equate the coefficients of various terms, so uh, various terms means equating the coefficients of Zf. Uh, we have a 1 equal to b 1 tilde equal to 1, uh, a 2 equal to minus b 2 tilde and a 3 is equal to this you can see term by term for uh, powers of this z f uh, 4 b 2 tilde square minus 2 b 3 tilde and so on. So, these are uh, the relationships between the virial coefficients and the cluster integrals. Okay. So, let us call this as equation 15. So, each uh, virial coefficient 
which is A L um, involves um, one or more cluster integrals. which are B L tilde. Okay. So, this is the outcome of all this uh, discussion and um, let us now calculate the virial coefficients for at least uh, one or two virial coefficients uh, at least one which is non-zero uh, and show that that our analysis actually makes sense for the interacting gas. So, computation of the virial coefficients um, now, there we uh, first uh, have to notice that A 1 equal to 1. So, which means that if you are at the lowest order, it does not give any correction to the gas. Uh, if you look at this uh, expression of uh, uh, because your B L tilde is also equal to 1 for so uh, at the lowest level that is L equal to 1 uh, graph. Uh, uh, then that gives you no correction and uh, it makes sense because then you are not uh, considering any two particle graphs. So, ignoring all two particle graphs and onwards uh, and above that means that we are talking about really one particle sector and one particle sector is a non interacting thing. So, we should simply get P V equal to N K T which is uh, the ideal gas law. So, uh, mm, this does not help. Uh, so, this tells you that even B L tilde uh, B 1 tilde rather is equal to 1. So, we need to at least go to the uh, A 2. So, and see that what comes. Uh, so, this is A 2 is equal to uh, minus B 2 tilde this is equal to uh, 2 pi over lambda cube and uh, 0 to infinity. 1 minus e to the power minus u r by k t and uh, uh, this uh, and the volume integral uh, r square d r. Remember that uh, because your um, u r is uh, depends only on r depend not the vector r, but the scalar r. So, we can do this um, volume integral uh, which is usually like this is equal to r square dr sin theta d theta and d phi. Now, if your integrand only depends on r, you can simply do this integral as uh, you know uh, 2 pi um, which is coming from phi and the sin theta d theta integral can be done and what we get is this 2 pi over lambda cube this shown already. And now, we are going to put a specific form for u of r in order to calculate this explicitly. So, what specific form can we use? We can of course, use the Leonard Jones uh, potential which is that 612 potential that we have talked about earlier. However, that uh, becomes more complicated. We also have proposed a simpler form uh, where uh, we have said that uh, uh, so, use this. So, u of r is equal to minus u 0 which is uh, the strength of the potential and hold to the power 6. So, once again just to remind you that this is like this and this is your r 0. So, uh, at r uh, lower than r 0 it is infinity. Uh, so, this is for r greater than equal to r 0 it is equal to infinity for r less than r 0. Okay. So, uh, so, this is like this part is. Uh, okay, so, let me okay. So, that is your uh, u of r versus r and uh, that is the form that we can use. Um, of course, one can use the Leonard Jones form as well, but it, the integral becomes more complicated. Uh, it is easier uh, if we use it and let us see what the A 2 comes out to. Uh, so, your um, A 2 becomes equal to um, 2 pi over lambda cube uh, and we have uh, this as uh, uh, 0 to uh, R 0. Uh, we have a r, z, uh, r square dr and we have a r 0 to infinity 
uh, we have 1 minus exponential uh, exponential u 0 by k t see the minus sign becomes plus sign because uh, there is a minus u 0 there and we have a r 0 over r whole to the power 6 um, and uh, uh, then uh, of course, there is a r square d r. Okay. Uh, the first integral is easy uh, that is just simply r square dr uh, 0 to r 0 and that gives you a r 0 cube uh, divided by 3 and so on. Uh, the second integral uh, is a little complicated, but the second integral becomes easy. So, this is the first integral or the first term on the inside the you know the square bracket, uh, bracket here uh, we have uh, so let me use uh, uh, not this bracket but there is another bracket here uh, yeah so the second integral uh, if you make an approximation uh, that uh, your uh, u0 by kt is much much smaller than 1 uh, this is called as the high temperature limit and this has been told earlier that uh, you know these are small but finite uh, at large temperature. So, in that case what you do is that uh, you write this as exponential alpha uh, r 0 by r whole to the power 6 and do a small expansion of this. So, this becomes alpha uh, r 0 by r whole to the power 6 and so on. So, this 1 will cancel with this 1 that you see there and uh, the integral becomes particularly easy. Uh, you can uh, you can write this uh, then as a 2 equal to um, 2 pi um, r 0 cube combining the two terms which is 3 uh, lambda cube uh, 1 minus u 0 by k t. And uh, because of this approximation being used and uh, uh, <coughs> we call it as a high temperature expansion, this cluster expansion is also uh, called as high temperature expansion. So, this is the form for the first non-zero uh, virial coefficient okay? um, and we have been able to calculate the cluster integral under some approximation and that approximation as we said makes sense because this is the high temperature approximation for this uh, for this particular case. So, at this level uh, your so at the uh, lowest order uh, I mean lowest order means it is not the lowest, but the lowest one did not give any correction. So, this is equal to p equal to k t over v uh, and a 1 plus 2 pi r 0 cube by 3 v. So, putting it into the uh, equation of state we get 1 minus u 0 over k t and uh, this is the uh, expression for pressure and this can be written as uh, so k t divided by v and we have 1 plus uh, b 2 t uh, v and this uh, b 2 t is given by uh, a 2 lambda cube which is equal to 2 pi r 0 cube by 3. So, this is just a, a new uh, name for the real coefficients uh, a 2 was also a function of t. So, a 2 t and multiplied by lambda cube. So, it is 2 pi r 0 cube by 3 1 minus u 0 by k t. Um, of course, we have found an expression for the pressure for an interacting gas, but whether uh, it, it has two approximations inbuilt. One is that we have used this 6 potential that is uh, minus u 0 r 0 by r whole to the power 6 and then have taken the high temperature expansion. So, uh, whether how reliable that is one does not know unless one uh, puts in all the information that we have obtained so far. And in fact, it turns out that if you do that, uh, you get an equation of uh, state for 
which has a form like this 3 v square um, this is equal to k t over uh, v uh, 1 plus uh, 2 pi r 0 cube by 3 v ok. And um, if you send it to the other side uh, you will have to make this thing as uh, 1 plus uh, well uh, 2 pi r 0 cube by 3 v going to the uh, other side and then uh, using this expansion that this is equal to 1 minus 2 pi r 0 cube by 3 v. You will see that this has a remarkable similarity with the van der Waals equation of state and uh, then it can be written as uh, a p plus uh, really a by v square that is the specific volume and then v minus b is equal to k t. Okay. And uh, we have uh, uh, 1 plus 2 pi um, r 0 cube by 3 v uh, this is equal to uh, 1 minus. Uh, so, so, this is what we have used there uh, we have already written that. So, let me uh, sort of skip this. So, this is where it comes from and uh, sorry the a is equal to 2 pi r 0 cube. Uh, u 0 divided by 3 and b is equal to 2 pi r 0 cube by 3. So, even with this um, approximation that we have done uh, that is uh, using this uh, potential as uh, u of r equal to minus u 0 r uh, 0 by r whole to the power 6 and the high temperature expansion. Um, which came in the form of uh, ignoring or rather using this u0 by kt to be much smaller than 1. Um, so, we still get um, the equation of state to resemble very closely or almost similarly with these definitions of a and b to be uh, of this form, um, but nevertheless it sort of mimics uh, the equation of state. So, this is the um, power of or the utility of this uh, link cluster expansion and uh, we have been uh, just uh, able to you know calculate one integral the first non-zero or the first correction so to say because the lowest order really did not give any correction the one that gives correction. So, let me rephrase this lowest order. Uh, that would give correction. Correction to what? Correction to the non-interacting limit. Okay. And uh, if you want further uh, expansions, uh, right, uh, more correct expressions for that, then you have to calculate all these B3 and uh, so on. So, these uh, a 3 is in terms of b 2 and b 3 and so on. So, we uh, calculate a 3 and then we calculate a 4 and so on. So, these are these would require us to calculate b 2 b 3 and uh, more uh, you know uh, farther uh, range of these f i j's have to be calculated or uh, they have to be taken into account. Uh, this would lead to more and more complex integrals, but nevertheless it can be done. Uh, the primary idea of this um, is pretty pedagogical that we want to show that uh, using this link cluster expansion uh, one can take into account the interaction effects. So, uh, towards the end of this uh, course uh, we have talked about a number of uh, interacting problems I mean starting from this renormalization group, transfer matrix, mean field theory, Bethe ansatz and then the link cluster expansion. Uh, some of them are uh, nicely you know uh, applicable to the uh, these uh, spin systems uh, which uh, you know also denotes the paramagnet to ferromagnet transition and so on and so forth. However, this link cluster expansions um, are relevant from uh, for uh, regions which are far away from this uh, phase transitions and we are uh, truly in the gaseous phase, but nevertheless it is an elegant technique that uh, uh, that allows you to calculate the uh, more and more improved equation of state 
compared to the ideal uh, equation of state which is P V equal to K T. Okay. So, I hope uh, the intention is clear and the calculations are clear. It involves really uh, two steps to be uh, correctly uh, you know found out and these are the two steps. Okay. So, these are the two steps this is step number 1 that is uh, finding out the distinct ways to uh, assign n particle into this uh, various kind of clusters and, um, and then of course, these uh, number 2 that you got is uh, how what are the values of all these clusters and so on. Uh, uh, we were here. So, uh, the values of each term is what is important. Okay. So, this is the next important thing. If you understand this and these assignments of various formation of various clusters, then calculating the partition function is only uh, bringing out a series expansion in terms of this cluster coefficients or these cluster integrals. And then of course, pertaining to certain uh, approximations, we can always have a potential function and then it just simply reduces to uh, calculating more and more complicated integrals. And suppose uh, uh, if we cannot do it by hand, we can uh, use numerical method, numerical means to calculate these integrals, but nevertheless uh, you finally get uh, what you what you want that is uh, what is the equation of state for an interacting gas uh, for an arbitrary form of interaction. So, I will stop here uh, for today. Uh, thank you. Mm -hmm.